So tonight, instead of working on anything crazy with interfaces, I'm trying some graphic stuff. Um, do a little experiment with shadows or shading. You can find similar uh, information on my website. There's some tutorials on making planets and textures, and this is one of the techniques similar to uh, something I did with GIMP, where you blend the shadows together with planets. I want to try something different with 001 here. I'm just making a basic shadow shape. Um, it's gotten a little bit complicated, but the, my node network. All I'm doing is taking a spherical gradient or radial gradient. It's a circular gradient. Um, adjusting the gradient just a little bit and then spherizing it with a tone curve. And tone curve, uh, all that's really doing is shifting where the colors are using an arc and then I blur it just a little bit. So it's not a whole lot of difference between these two, but this smooths out the brighter areas that you see here in the tone curve, so it kind of blends them better. And then in here I'm using a point light. I shouldn't have to dive in so many networks. I've copy-pasted parts <laughs> in weird places. So in here there's a point light, and it's pointing up into the right I do want it to be down here um, closer to the center actually let me I want to keep it with elevation 50 I think I just want to set to elevation 50 so I kind of want it to be facing like the brighter side facing the right this is something I think I that will come into play when I'm using 001 to test these. Um, so this is what it looks like when it's added to the planet graphic. And if I take that off, I can go in here and say none. And you can see the difference when I press OK. The shadow adds a lot of depth to it. So. It's a little bit wonky. It's kind of slightly bigger than the planet on one side. Um, I'm using two different programs for the spheres, or making the spherical gradient, so it can be a little bit weird. But I think that looks okay. That has a good shadow. Um, but what I want to do is I want to take this first. I don't think I want any occlusion radius. It's kind of... Let me see if I can change. Let me put this more at 25. Maybe even 15. I kind of want to get rid of this darker edge that's kind of showing up on the side. It doesn't really show up too badly in the final render here, but let me just try this. I'm going to render this out, and I'm going to save it over my... 256 sphere shape there. I might come back in here and I'm just kind of using this as a placeholder right now, planet shadow. Uh, let's pull my horizontal one. Just kind of rotates the shadow so it's facing the right. Doesn't change the planet too much, but I do want to try something with that shadow. Um, I've never done this. I don't know if this will work right, but I want to try it just to see. So it's hard to figure out exactly how I'm going to do this because if I want to do graphic scripting, I have to find a way. First, I want to. I need the position of the center of the map, which will be the star. Um, but the star, I can't check the position of the star technically but I can check the position of the actor that's wearing this shadow layer. So it is kind of darker at the top than on the side, so I'm going to rotate this just a little bit, put it maybe at 10. That's kind of, kind of better, I think. We'll see. I'm just going to do some experimenting. And I can always try different types of shadows too, uh, different amounts of shadows. 
So I'll go ahead and replace that with my slightly updated one. So that's sort of towards the right. And I'll save that. And what I want to do is I want to get the rotation, um, the Z rotation, so that it rotates in a circle on the center point. Uh, but I want it to base it on the angle between this actor or the actor that's wearing it and the center of the map. So I have to come in here and find a way to do that. So let's see. I want it to give me the angle between directions, I believe. Oh, no, not between directions. Um, I want to find the direction between points. Now, the destination and the source. Source is going to be actor relate dot x, actor relate dot y. That will relate to the actor that's wearing or that this sprite is attached to. And then the position. <coughs> I want it to be a position on the map and so what I need to do is find the size of the map that the main player is on and divide it by two. I'll find the middle x point I believe and size y divided by two. So if this map is 2,000 pixels wide, you'll find size x is 2,000, divide that by 2 to find 1,000 at the midpoint. So we'll try that. Now if I did that right, if I go into the game this shadow should rotate and it should be on this side of the planet. I don't know if that's going to work, I haven't tried it before. I'm kind of interested to see if it does. It's not the most amazing effect, but um, just a little bit more detail to the planets, because they are pretty flat. Um, let me turn that down. Let's go load this one. We'll see. There we go. Our shadow, or my shadow's on this side. Um, I think I'm behind it for some reason. <laughs> I must have moved it. Oh, gosh. You can also see I've done a little bit of adjusting to some of these menus. I've added um, this ugly little meter section. It just This is temporary. It's going to keep my meters separated and visible so I know what's going on. Change the display here so it shows the names of the objects you're clicking on. Um, I'm also going to have to add a shadow layer to this minimap here. And you can see a little bit of flickering here where the where this layer is kind of the wrong size. And it's been tricky. Um, just getting it the right size requires a lot of teeny tiny incremental changes to this cropping circle here. So I kind of want it to be slightly bigger. Try 18.8 .8 maybe. I don't want it to flicker. slightly bigger. Shouldn't add too much around the edges, I don't think. Yeah, there's just a single little layer around the edges that I might want to get rid of. Um, let's try that again. Just a little bit less. 18.6, maybe. It's a weird process. And the reason I want it facing right is just by default in 001, it's um, rotating starts from zero degrees and they'll rotate around the center point. And right is zero degrees, I believe. Did I do this? Just in case. I'll zoom in just a little bit. You can kind of see that it flickers still. 
And that's because it's an attached sprite, I believe. Um, let me try something here. Planet Shadow. I would like to not have to include this shadow layer on every single planet. If I don't have to, I can just use this one graphic. But that might not be possible. I don't actually know. Um, so if I paste this layer in here, I have to realign it. So it's at 0, 0, 128. Yep. My planet collision's a little bit big. I think I do want to increase the size just another tiny bit. And I'm going to take this off here. So now it's just a planet layer. It's harder to see the flickering. It's kind of there. I don't know. We'll see. I'd rather have it as a separate layer um, rather than having every single planet use the same. Uh, let's actually use this one. So I'm not underneath the planet. There you go. You can. Oh, it's still flickering just a little bit. So. Hmm. I've got a few ideas on how to fix that, but not 100%. I first want to turn on smooth scaling. Still doing a little bit of a flicker there. Now, I want to try something. Don't know if this will work or not, but we'll see. Uh, we'll jump in here. My planets. Grab this guy. And let's go ahead and. Everything to be black. around the edges there. Well, that might not work the way I was hoping. Because it's rendered from Blender, it does give me these little artifacty bits around the edges. Uh, I'm trying to match the size of my gradient here. It's very, very tough to do because I'm using different programs. Uh, <laughs> matching the size of a sphere or a circle is kind of tough. Let's go grab that new one. Test it on both of these. Test 256. Not really much flickering. That's difficult to fix. Come on, Prima 
touch any of my saves. And that flickers just a bit too much. I don't like that. It's mainly because um, the, the pixel size of this is, uh, let me see if, um, let me try something, do a 512 render, test 512, and I'll scale that down by 50%, I don't know if that, that'll probably still flicker. <laughs> Now it's going to be bigger, and I want this to be called lighting, and I'll scale it by 50, 50, and 50. That may not make an ounce of difference, it does still kind of flicker a little bit. the effect works the way I want it to. Hmm. Oh, that's annoying. Well, also I accidentally put it in front of the player. Whoops. And just to make sure... Player ship is on render layer two. Let's put on what's in this? So I want that on render layer one. I believe stations I think are zero. Yeah. Okay. Tricky. Always gotta remember the render layers because it'll put things in front of other stuff or hide players behind them. Uh, right. Now I shouldn't be hidden behind the planet when I go over it. Even though I am for some reason, I don't understand why. dumb stuff to fix. We'll get rid of that. Just leave that as a normal flat planet. First I want to see why my player ship is not flying over it. <clears throat> Let's just load any random save. Now I'm on top of it. I want to include that. It would be nice as a body layer because it would just load it up here, but let's try as a, an attached sprite. Mm 
why am I behind it? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> what? Okay, let me go in here. Scoot the holler. Well, that's a lot of poses to adjust. Shoot. Oh, that one's still set to be in front of the player. So I'll put that back at one. I think it's because I keep messing up my layer render priorities. Load one of these. I'm still behind it. Why? should be no reason why I'm behind it like that. Uh, come on. I always have weird issues with transparent stuff. I don't want it to be additive because that'll just brighten it and look stupid. Oh, why is it doing that to me? <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and put the smooth scaling on my planets. I don't know why I don't have that turned on yet. Flicker is annoying. <coughs> hmm. Very strange. Oops. used to weapons. Oh, I need a load of save instead. So something about the transparency of the attached sprite layer is making me go behind the planet now, which is really obnoxious. But the effect is working. It's giving me a shadow in the correct location, and I can test that with my other planets by just adding that shadow. So they'll all look the same at first. Get 
that like a yellowish desert atmosphere and the shadow Now all of the planet shadows should look like they're facing towards the sun or the direction of the sun. We'll at least get the basic effect in here. Um, I do have a bigger one for the gas giants that I'll have to import. I should be able to fly around to the planets and see that their shadows are all in different places. Now that flickering part, that's going to be hard. Then I got to figure out the why I'm able to fly behind things. It's kind of obnoxious. There we go. The shadows in the back of the planet. But I fly underneath it. Zoom over here. So I think that looks pretty nice. Cool little effect. Nice use of the graphic scripting. Just a few small details that I have to figure out. Um, in some cases it's lined up correctly with the planet <coughs> the closer it is to being to the right um, since you're rotating the shadow uh, the outline will adjust and sometimes flicker I also don't know why it's making me fly behind things now because that's kind of dumb actually have no idea why. Because <coughs> the players at layer two That's a mystery. <laughs> no. Well, that'll be another for my to-do list, I, I imagine. Um, go to the very bottom of this. Let's add that. Fix. Player ship flying behind planets when transparent shadow layer is attached. So, that's interesting. Planets are on layer render zero. Planet shadows are unaffected. Oh, that's why those aren't set to overlay. Okay. I'm just dumb. It's always something like that. Boop. There we go. Think. Much better. Oh, and it doesn't flicker anymore. Much better. Okay. 
having it set to overlay on accident just kind of broke everything. So now all the planets can have their little shadow layer. It doesn't show up here because I haven't included it as a body sprite on the mini map. tricky. The less tricky part would be to just add the shadow as a layer on every planet, which I might do. That might be what I do. Scanning. Yeah. Entering planetary There's not a shadow on the 3D spheres, which is unfortunate. That's a little bit trickier. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that or not. But I do, I do like the way that turns out with the shadow rotating towards the sun. Turbo zooming around. Ah, kind of slide past where you're trying to go if you're using the turbo. Not the boost, but the testing turbo. Scanning. I want to make a clean everything scanned. I want to make a save. Scanning. That has all my planets scanned already. They sort of, they have this, this appearance that they're being lit. What I like, let me save it over this one. And I don't have their shadows on the star chart either, so I'll have to add that in. Um, don't even need that there. And Planet shadow layer to minimap and star charts. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of a cool effect. <clears throat> I've got a separate one uh, for the gas giants here as well, because they're bigger, they're slightly different. Let me actually a new one here and reopen uh, this one I want to save as planet sphere and go back up here to my back to my genetica folder scooch that over 256. Now I can reopen my 512. This one's a little bit different because the, the edges are smaller. They're much closer to the edge. I'm going to go back in here. Back in. I can delete all of this nonsense. My point light needs to be set to zero. Uh, more like 10, I think it was. Yeah, 10 and 50. And I can render this one, save this one.
I'm going to save it over this original test sphere here. I'm going to just copy paste this and replace it with my jumbo test sphere. It'll take a second. I'll just name this lighting. And then we'll attach that. <laughs> and renamed it 257. Oops, whatever. And now it's got a shadow as well, and that should rotate towards the sun. save I just made and go down over here to the gas giant oh, arrows over here yeah now the shadows down here As the stars up to the northwest So the reason I want to I want to use an attached sprite is so I only have two shadows imported, um, a small one and a large one, or whatever sizes I need. If I import it for every single planet, there will be a 512 graphic for every single uh, gas giant or every single large planet, and there will be a shadow graphic for every single medium planet or small planet. So, I want it to be an attached sprite. I'm going to have to find a way. Um, I think there is a way. Just to check, I want to jump into one of these random scripts. Um, not this one. My debug menu. Testing button. There we go. I have a testing button. There's all this mess in here, so you can just ignore all of that. Just want to check something here. I don't know if I can actually retrieve the attached sprites. Um, it is possible that I, I cannot. Makes it difficult. <sighs> Dang. Well, since I can't retrieve an attached sprite, I might actually have to link a shadow to every single planet in order to show it on the map correctly, or in the sector map correctly. That's kind of an oversight, maybe. It might not be, it might be something that's just so old in double one that you can't. do run into some weird limitations once in a while. It's kind of part of the fun of the engine is overcoming limitations or finding cool ways to do stuff like adding this shadow here. That's a lighting effect that doesn't require any lighting. Um, I do like using <coughs> layers and blend modes and stuff a lot in GIMP and Photoshop, but since you can't really, all you can use in 001 is additive blending, so that wouldn't work with a shadow layer like this, but that does look pretty nice. It also, I would like it to show up here, so it's unfortunate that I can't just use an attached sprite. Uh, yikes! So that that will increase the project size for every <clears throat> for every large planet that requires a shadow. I'll have to have a shadow layer on its on its actual sprite. Um, 
So I'd have to go through every single planet and import a shadow layer, which I think that's a big layer. Oh, no, that's the right one. <coughs> so that's unfortunate. This should be layer one. <laughs> and you see that really covers up a lot of the planet. Unless I make it transparent. Then it just adds that nice shading to it. So I'll have to go through all of those planets and swap out and add that layer. So I don't want it to have an attached sprite anymore. Just the regular shadow layer. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh well. And then I can just come in here, copy paste it. Oop. Make it a zero. Bring it to the front there. Forgot to make it transparent because I do that every time. About 128. Come back through. Set that to 128. <clears throat> there we go. Those look nicer. Still got to remove all these attached sprites. Ah, man. Oh, well. I figure it's going to be kind of a big project by the time I'm done anyway, so... We'll come in here, paste that layer. 128. We'll mine it. Face it. And then one more to go. That's frustrating. That makes everything bigger. But that's okay. down here, get rid of this one, and go down to my shadow, or 257, and paste it in, 128, zero, zero. Oh, I have to change that from a, I want a spherical collision for my planets. Oops. Dude, dude, just slightly larger than the planets. Okay, now the shadows should show up on the, the mini-map and the sector map. Oh, 
Now this is all kind of just one continuous thing rather than a whole bunch of stuff. Most of the videos I do tend to cover multiple things, but this is an effect I've been thinking about for a while. I've just finally sat down to try it out and see if I can get it to work right. And I'm actually pretty happy with it. Uh, it worked exactly how I was hoping. Now, it'll look different in the camera because it'll always have the shadow on one side. I'm wondering, I don't know if I can fix that or not. Because it won't rotate that, um, well, that's kind of okay. It's like looking at just a shaded version of the planet. And you can see the shadows on the mini-map. You can see the shadows on the sector map, but since they're not actors... Oh, that's rough. Since they're not... Um, those are just... Re they're not referencing an actor. They're not rotating to face the star correctly, so... The effect looks good on the main map, but it, it doesn't work correctly on fields, so... Hmm... Hmm, hmm, hmm... There could be more that I have to do to get that to work correctly. I don't think I'm gonna sit here and mess around with that tonight, but... I'm covering for a coworker tonight on the overnight shift, so I had an extra day to do a little bit of streaming. It's kind of busy. We're in the middle of a music festival here, so there's lots and lots of people here. I'm just kind of sneaking off. <laughs> okay, so I do like the way that it's working uh, in general with the shadows on the main map. It's kind of weird that it doesn't update there. I was really hoping that it would at least... Well, I guess since these aren't attached to an actor, it's also... It's not going to work. The rotation scripting won't work because it's not part of an actor. Um... I don't actually think I can fix that without intense fiddling. Well, that might be all I'm going to cover in this video. Making my shadows and adding that effect to the planets. But that's how I do it. Um, I would use a spherical gradient. And the way that it's colored, uh, I forgot to even mention that. It's using a colorizer gradient that goes from... Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, that's the first one. Now, what's the second one? <laughs> I get confused by my own uh, network sometimes. So, all I've got doing is going from a solid black to a transparent so that it leaves this see through area here. So, I don't know, that might help. If you're trying to make gradients in GIMP, you can also do that. You can make a gradient with transparency. <laughs> but that's how I add the shadow effect to make it look like there's light casting on the planets. I'll figure out how to do some more stuff with the interfaces so that they reflect the direction that the light's shining. But that'll take some fiddling around. In the meantime, as always, I have a website called ScreamingBrainStudios.com. There's nothing related to 001 here yet, but I'm hoping to put together some stuff for that, uh, especially for my patrons. But right now, you can just get um, thousands and thousands of free public domain assets. I've got a whole bunch of different graphic packs full of tile sets and textures and noises and gradients and backgrounds and buttons, interface graphics, tile sets, all the stuff you might need to experiment and prototype. And then there's a bunch of old school graphics tutorials here that you can use to make your own graphics. And there's a list of tools 
of all kinds of stuff you can use to make your own graphics. Most of them are free. There's a couple paid ones in here that I think are worth the money, like Backdrop Designer or PD Howler. Um, Bryce is a fun one. That's an, it's almost abandoned where it's basically abandoned where, but you can still acquire it. So almost all the software that I use is part of this list of abandoned, no longer available, um, ancient software that does very specific stuff. And there's a whole bunch of them, everything from texture making tools to old image processors like paint shop pro, but you can get a lot of the free tools still all the ones that I use are unavailable so I try to make tutorials and stuff that use programs you can still get but you can also become a patron for one dollar if you subscribe um, you get a special thanks credit and all of the asset packs on the main page and access to thousands of additional free assets that I have released or other results of experimentation and testing and stuff so Everything here is public domain. It's free to use in whatever project you want, however you want, in any format. You can edit them, you can recolor them, you can do whatever you want. Um, hopefully you guys check it out. Hope you guys find some stuff that uh, you use in your own projects. And hopefully these videos have been helpful with your own 001 projects. Again, thank you for watching. I will try and see if I can figure out more effects with my shadows for the next video. Um, I'd like to start getting into building my trade centers and shops and stuff soon. So I hope I see you guys again soon. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time.